what do you think back to last year, okay? 2016 in Lubbock, Oklahoma and Texas Tech, and the teams combined that night for 125 points, over 1,700 yards of total offense. Baker Mayfield set an OU record for most touchdown passes in the game with seven, not to mention the fact that Pat Mahomes that night had over 800 yards of total offense, 732 came through the air. It was a game that was a four-hour-plus marathon, but the Sooners outlasting the Red Raiders 66-59, to a game that saw just about everything, everything except for defense. And, yeah, the game lasted for over four hours, but if you were a fan of either team, it left you with anxiety even longer than that once the game was finished. It was that exhausting of a game to live through. Well, the two teams will meet Saturday this time in Norman, as Oklahoma is a 20-point favorite for a Saturday night kickoff at Gaylord Memorial. As I mentioned, 7 p.m. kickoff game can be seen on ABC Regional, which means if you live in the heartland or I'm guessing the western half of the country, this is the game you'll get on ABC. Otherwise, if you live in the eastern part of the country, it's going to be Georgia Tech at Clemson. And even if that's the case, if you can't get the game on ABC, you can get it on ESPN, too. Again, they've got the game, I think, split down the middle as far as who's going to watch what. I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. Of course, the matchup itself, there's a lot of familiarity from the Oklahoma standpoint. First, for the head coach. For the first time, Lincoln Riley will face his former team as head coach. That's right. Riley is from Lubbock, and by the way, was a quarterback on the Texas Tech roster back in the early 2000s at the same time that Cliff Kingsbury, the current head coach of Texas Tech, was a starting QB. Eventually, Riley would become a graduate assistant at TTU under Mike Leach and an assistant coach throughout the 2000s. And, of course, that would springboard Riley's career as an offensive coordinator at East Carolina. Speaking of East Carolina, of course, that's where Ruff McNeil, of course, was a head coach recently. But back in the 2000s, was an assistant coach at Texas Tech and for a brief period was interim head coach. So familiarity for McNeil as well. And for Baker Mayfield, of course, this is where his college career got springboarded. Four years ago, as a walk-on at Texas Tech, was there for five and a half months, did good things. But, of course, when he got hurt, that paved the way for Davis Webb and Mayfield never saw the field again and eventually transferred. And beginning in 2015, was a starting quarterback for OU, and the rest, as they would say, is history. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Now, have you noticed something about the Sooners these past few weeks? Yes, they've been able to win most of these games, and yes, they've been able to pull them off. However, though, they can't continue to walk this tightrope, if you will. And don't get me wrong, I'm grateful that they're 6-1, and one, they're still in the top 10 in the country, still viable for the college football playoff if things break their way, and of course, still viable for the Big 12 championship game. I get that, right? But still, and I know I'm not the only one who feels this way, the Sooners at times just don't play very well. And for a change last week, it was a poor start. I mean, the linebackers last week, for as well as they played in the second half against K-State, looked atrocious in the first half, especially against the run. And throughout the game, I know that the refs missed penalties against Kansas State. You can't control that. You can't control what you do as far as penalties. And the Sooners are still committing uh, too many of them at the most inopportune times during a game. They had a shot last week at closing out K-State in that fourth quarter, but still a couple of penalties backed them up. And, of course, that led to the special teams debacle, you know, on the mishandled um, snap on the punt. And, of course, K-State took advantage of it later by tying the game. When, in actuality, if the Sooners had taken care of business, it wouldn't even have come down to that because they were on their way to at least a field goal, possibly a touchdown, to get up by 14 and put the game on ice. Stuff like that, those penalties, you know, not being able to convert on third and fourth and one. I mean, you got 36 inches to keep the drive going couple of cracks at it, and you can't do it behind one of the best offensive lines in the country. There's a problem right there. And not being opportunistic inside your opponent's 20-yard line, a.k.a. the red zone, that can't continue to happen where you're throwing picks or just settling for field goals instead of getting those sevens. And, yeah, you can't get touchdowns all the time inside the 20, but you should not be coming away empty-handed, which at times we've seen the Sooners do inside the opponent's 20-yard line. These are little things that can't be corrected, but it's also little things that if the Sooners continue to play at this level as far as execution or lack thereof, it will cost them, maybe not this week against Texas Tech, but it will create drama against the Red Raiders, and it will cost them against Oklahoma State and against TCU the next two games after TTU. 
So I'm trying to say it's the little things that count when it comes to football. It's the little things that make the big things happen. And for the Sooners, they have the capability of still getting to the Big 12 championship game and winning it and maybe a college football playoff despite the stumble against Iowa State. By the way, have you noticed the Cyclones are ranked in the top 25 in the country? I mean, who would have thought that? I mean, Matt Campbell might be Big 12 Coach of the Year. So that loss against um, Iowa State, it still stings. It's still hard to believe. But we're seeing the Iowa State may not be that Big 12 lower-tier team that we have been accustomed to seeing in recent seasons. Campbell's got Iowa State playing some pretty good footballs. But then again, the Sooners got to take care of those little things. And they're going to go against a Texas Tech team that – was taking care of business those first three games because they won all three in the month of September. But recently, we've seen um, Nick Schimanek not play quite as well, the Texas Tech quarterback, and we've seen the Texas Tech defense going back to that Texas Tech defense that we've seen in years past, very vulnerable against the pass. The Red Raiders have lost three of their last four games. And last week's game against Iowa State, it was a, it was a surprise that Tech lost, but it's also the fact that Texas Tech, in the game, barely had over 300 yards of total offense. Shimanek only threw for 200 yards, had an interception in the game. In fact, I think Texas Tech had three turnovers in that contest against Iowa State. So, I mean, Iowa State in that game, you give them credit for making far fewer mistakes. And you know, this Red Raider team that entered that matchup with over 500 yards per game of offense, well, that, that dropped down because they barely had over 300 total O in the game. And one thing I've noticed about Texas Tech, in two of their three losses, the Red Raiders, as far as running the ball against Oklahoma State, barely over two yards a carry. And last week um, against Iowa State, just over three yards per carry. We talk about Texas Tech's offense, you know, with um, with Batson, terrific receiver, uh, Kiki QT, who is definitely one heck of a receiver. In fact, he's had a fantastic year for the Red Raiders, a little over 700 yards in receiving. But it's the ground game that, you know, you can't neglect if you're Texas Tech. And in two of those three losses that they've suffered recently, the ground game didn't do much at all. And we'll see this week if um, the number one ball carrier for Texas Tech, we'll see if he even gets a shot. Justin Stockton had a head injury last week. He only had four carries. Uh, so that could very well lead to the King. That's uh, Trey King getting the bulk of the carries. Last week, King averaged a little more than four yards a carry and touched the ball uh, 20 times out of the Red Raider backfield. But not having Justin Stockton, we'll find out by game time if he'll play. That would really uh, be a hindrance for Texas Tech, but we have to wait and see. So there you have it, Oklahoma defense. This is a shot at redemption. After what happened last season in Lubbock, this was a game in which sports radio just absolutely lit up Mike Stoops. I was all over Mike Stoops after that game. I know Big 12 offenses are amongst the best in college football, but giving up over 800 yards of total offense it made me want to just puke. I was so sick after that game, even though you won, of seeing the Oklahoma defense, I wanted to throw up. So this is a shot at getting some redemption. You're not going to be able to stop Texas Tech, but for crying out loud, don't make it like last year and have to make it a 50-point type of ball game that OU will have to score to win. Don't make OU's offense have to get to that level. Um, as far as Texas Tech's defense goes, um, they're very, very soft against the pass, um, giving up almost 300 yards per game through the air. Um, they're only giving up about 135 rushing yards, but I think that's because offenses, opposing offenses are being selective against TTU. In other words, they know that they can hurt Texas Tech through the air, and so a lot of teams will, will throw more often than they will rush the ball. So this is a great opportunity for the passing game of Oklahoma to shine for Baker Mayfield, who, by the way, did not practice at all last week against Kansas State, and it turned out to be statistically one of, the, one of the best games of his career against the Wildcats, throw for over 400 yards in that contest and was instrumental in that come from behind win over K-State. Um, again, Baker Mayfield's going to have an opportunity, you know, to find C.D. Lamb. He's going to be able to find, you know, Jeff Bidette. He's going to be able to find Mark Andrews on a frequent basis. And if that's the case, then expect Rodney Anderson to, again, have another stellar game. And that's the thing about the Sooners this year. You know, will it be Abdul Adams? Will it be Trey Sermon, who we thought was the number one guy? But Rodney Anderson had his breakout moment with over 140 yards rushing last week and had a big-time second half in that win over KSU. Again, if that passing game can do what I think they're going to do, then Oklahoma offensively should come out a big winner. Final thoughts on this game. Um, if you're going to this game, by the way, and you're going to be wearing shorts, you're going to be wearing short sleeves, uh, you might want to rethink your wardrobe, okay? It's going to be in the 50s on Saturday. But Saturday evening, 
It's going to be in the 40s come kickoff. By the time the game's over, we'll probably be in the upper 30s as far as that temperature goes. So, you know, wearing anything that's not uh, warm-type weather clothing, um, if you're not doing that, that would be unwise. Um, unless the Sooners get caught looking ahead to Oklahoma State in next week's Bedlam game, the Sooners should be able to handle Texas Tech by at least three touchdowns. In fact, that's what I'm going with, 45-24. to 24. The Sooners should get a nice victory at home, and any victory gets nice, but especially one at home after what happened three weeks ago, the last home game that we saw the Sooners play, which they suffered that shocking loss to Iowa State. Sooners get back on the winning track at Gaylord Memorial and should move to 7-1 on the season. 45-24 is my prediction. Don't forget, on this web page coming up soon, I'll have my three picks. We'll tell you how me and the coin did in our three picks last week and three more picks awaiting you. Boomer Sooner!